my guest, Rob DeLuca. I want to know about an individual uh, that is moving in such a high realm of seer prophecy uh, that came from such a humble beginnings. I mean, you got saved as a young kid at 11, and you ended up at 18 living homeless in a cardboard box? Yeah. Uh, I um, came to the Lord, and um, I fell away. And in my teen years, I became a drug addict, and I ended up living in a cardboard box in Los Angeles. And I gave my heart over to the Lord totally, and I fell in love with Him. Tell me about, you know, th this intrigues me. A woman bumps into you into the, in, in the street. Tell me about her. The Holy Spirit led this woman to cross my path. And um, my friend and I, we were looking for drugs. And she started telling me uh, everything that was in my heart, that I was lonely, that I was sad, that I was depressed. And she told me about Jesus. And she told me about the love of the Lord and the goodness of God and the mercy of God. I told her that I met him once when I was a young boy, and she asked if uh, she could pray for me, and she led me in the sinner's prayer. The Spirit of God touched me right there on the street. Matter of fact, she laid her hand on my head, and I fell back against the wall, and I knew this is what I'm looking for. I don't... Out of curiosity, had you ever uh, experienced God in, in, in an experiential force? I fashion. You know, um, when I was a, a young boy, I felt like goosebumps all over right. me, and the Holy Spirit uh, touched me when I was baptized in water. So I did sense the presence of, of the Lord, but as soon as I recognized that glorious presence of Jesus, I knew this is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. This is, uh, this is what I need for the rest of my life. Imagine what would have happened if that woman hadn't been obedient to walk up to Rob, uh, read his mail, if you will, grab his attention, and then have him experience God. I mean, I imagine you, you don't even want to think about what your life would have been like. No, I don't. I'm so thankful the Lord saved me. Okay, so you, you ended up uh, working in a uh, church, and there was one point where you had a major encounter with God's Spirit. Well, one night I was uh, in the church and uh, I just finished uh, cleaning up the sanctuary and I decided to pray and I laid down on my face and I started to pray. The presence of the Lord came very strong into the room. And as I started to pray in tongues, uh, the Holy Spirit started to cause me to vibrate. And I started to weep and cry and, and travail. I started to groan. As that took place, I started to vibrate and then my body started to hover off the ground. Uh, really? I it mean, really, physically, you, it, you were hovering above the ground? About two feet. Two feet? Yeah. Where was the camera when that happened? I'm just teasing. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> as that took place, I, my, in my mind, I knew something's taking place that's supernatural. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to keep on going with this because I knew I was off the ground. I knew my body was hovering. And as soon as I thought, uh, the name Jesus, I left my body and I flew out the ceiling of the church. I went over uh, the hills of the city. I, I looked down and I saw the church building. I saw uh, the hills. I went through the clouds and as soon as I did that, I headed toward these two huge beautiful doors that opened up before me. And as that took place, I went into uh, the Father's lap. and. Father God began to cuddle me. I felt his love. I was weeping while I was in my body, but I was in another place. I really believe that the Lord took me up to heaven to his throne room. As that uh, occurred, uh, the yeah, Lord... You know, as you're sharing this right now, I, I feel such an increase in the presence of God. Are you feeling the same thing? I am thing? too. I am, I'm feeling surges of, of his love flow through my body right now. And sometimes I begin to weep uh, when I talk about this story because the Lord spoke to me about my life. He told me about the future of my life. He told me what I was called to do. I was 18 years old and the Lord told me that I would minister uh, to the nations. The Lord told me that he would use me to heal his people. I and mean, at 18, you, ju you, just, you just recovered from being a drug addict living in a cardboard box. And, you're, and he says you're, go you're going to be doing all these wonderful things. I had an encounter with God that changed my life. Well, the Lord was speaking to me. Uh, I saw 
uh, a diamond jewel hovering next to uh, Father God. And the Father said, do you see the jewel? I said, yes, I do. As I looked closer, I saw the names of every person that I had ever met. I saw family names. I saw names from uh, my friends in school. I saw relatives' names. And he said, do you see these names? He said, I want you to pray for every person on the face of this jewel. And he said, as you do, you will see their lives touched by my presence. As that took place, the Lord spoke a few personal things to me. And then he, he hugged me. And soon as he hugged me, I felt the power of God like I've never felt it before. And I ended up back in my body and I fell back to the ground. I'll tell you what, I am feeling the power of God. I, I don't know what God's going to do, but he's going to be spectacular. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Rob DeLuca. And uh, Rob, uh, you're minding your own business and an angel comes and tells you about New Zealand. Explain. Uh, I was in uh, Indiana helping out with a youth group and I was staying uh, with one of my friends in a basement. We were in sleeping bags camping out and it was the middle of the night. I was laying on the floor and I felt someone nudge me right in my face like they tapped me on my face and I opened my eyes and I saw the foot of an angel right at the, the base of, of where I was laying. And I looked up and I said, what do you want? Now, how did you know that was an angel as opposed to a burglar? He was luminescent. Uh, that, that, that's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he looked um, gray, like a smoky figure. You know, at nighttime, uh, you can kind of see the light coming through the windows a bit. So I was able to see within the room, but uh, he was illuminating, he was like a smoky figure, and he was huge. He pointed to me and he, and he said, you are being called to New Zealand. And then he pointed- Had you ever been to New Zealand before? No, I hadn't. And he spoke uh, about my friend that was uh, sleeping, uh, and he said, do you see this young man? He said, you are to be with him for a season of your life, and you are to go to New Zealand, and I will bring you to this land you will reveal the glory of God from one side of the nation to the other. And it has taken place. Now, as, from what I understand, you went to New Zealand with uh, $105 yes, in sir. your wallet. Yes. You were going, you were going by faith. An angel told you to go. You had a hundred bucks. A Bible a and a suitcase. And a suitcase. Yeah. By faith I went, and then as I... Uh, Wait, wasn't that a little scary? Yeah, oh, come on, it had a bit. <laughs> Yeah, but I thought to myself, you know, uh, if I fail, I'm going to fail in faith. But when you believe God, God uh, will supernaturally meet your needs. I went, uh, the Lord opened a door. We started a small catering business, a sandwich uh, business. We opened up a sandwich shop. And as uh, time went by, we uh, ended up owning uh, five uh, different food stores. We owned three restaurants. With a hundred bucks? Yes, sir. <laughs> as we started with nothing and uh, God blessed everything that we did. Now you're a senior pastor also of a major significant church and uh, how much is your salary? I'm a volunteer at our church and I do not have a salary. I'm a senior pastor because I love God and I love people and uh, that's about it. My businesses take good care of me. Now you came you had a revelation from God that there is a big problem in reference to Christians and money. There's a wrong spirit connected with Christians and you came out with a CD series called Breaking the Power of Covetousness. What did God tell you about this teaching? Well, I ministered this word in Southern California and after uh, uh, the message was delivered, the Lord spoke to me and he said, this message will go throughout the world and I will help people in their finances and I will set them free concerning debt, concerning greed, concerning lust, and I will bless them as they hear this message. Now, God uh, broke you free in a very unusual fashion. It has to do with uh, a boat you coveted. Uh, I was fasting and praying at the beginning of the year and I was about to uh, purchase a nice fishing boat. 
And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to sew the boat. It was a $30,000 um, boat. And when I heard the voice of the Lord, I said, well, God, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. We're going to buy the boat. I'm looking at boat magazines. The Lord uh, spoke to me and he said, do you want your boat or do you want me? And when he said that, I said, okay, I'll sew the boat. And then immediately after, the Lord said, I will bless you and give you a harvest because of this. Just tell me one blessing that you see directly attributed to your obedience. It, it, it's not like uh, you, you have a boat and you say, I'm going to give it away. It's because God told him to do this. What did you see as a result? Well, at that time in my business, um, we had a small uh, little uh, cafe. It was pretty much our first uh, or a little restaurant. And uh, there was an open door for us to open up a larger restaurant in the University of Auckland. Uh, as that took place, uh, there were committee meetings. The end result was that uh, the university or the government uh, blessed us with um, financial contribution to pay for the entire restaurant. And God blessed us with uh, a lot of money, <laughs> if I can say that. He gave us enough to be able to build a restaurant. He also blessed us with rent free for two years. And uh, that has opened a door uh, to the University of Auckland for salvation, uh, for uh, uh, meetings to be held where people can be saved. You know what I love about your teaching? Because it's been so unbalanced about money, especially on Christian television, where it's, it's they could be, it, it, in other words, you don't, even, the same people apply the same principles for each ministry, and it's, you're not giving to that ministry, you're giving to get money for yourself. The whole thing seems backwards. Well, I believe in prosperity. I believe that God is the God of blessing. I believe in sowing and reaping. I believe in tithing. Me I, too, but there's yeah. something wrong with this picture. Well, see, the thing is, many times preachers make uh, prosperity the be-all, end-all of Christianity, which is wrong. Uh, prosperity or financial abundance is a means to an end, and the end is the souls of mankind. Listen, there is such a move of God's Spirit on this set right now. I can't wait to see what God's going to do. We'll be right back after this word. Hello, Sid Roth here. We're coming into such an amazing time in the history of God. It's the, if I could choose the one time to be alive, it would be right now. We're coming into a, a resurrection, if you will of the miracles we read in the Bible. So they're not just one in a, in a hundred years, or, or one, uh, one in, in a year, or even one in a month, but every meeting people are getting fabulous miracles happen. I mean, literally, uh, metal is turning into bones. Uh, tattoos or, or scars are disappearing. Are you seeing this, Rob? Uh, we are seeing some amazing miracles. Uh, recently, I saw a little boy healed of autism. Uh, I prayed for a three-year... Uh, now, that's a big thing. Tell, tell me specifically about this one you prayed for. I prayed for this little boy that had autism, and you know how autistic children, they kind of like zone out and look off into the distance. Mm -hmm. I began to weep because the little boy was about my boy's age, and I said, this could be me. I felt the compassion of the Lord. I prayed for this little boy. His parents took him home that night. The next morning, uh, normally this uh, uh, little boy just stares off into space uh, when he wakes up. But his mother walked into the bedroom and said, good morning, son. He turned and looked and said, good morning, mommy, for the first time. Mm. They brought this little guy uh, to the meeting the following night to testify. I looked at him and I said, do you remember me? And he said, yes, I do. He high-fived me and then waved to the crowd. We broke out in laughter. We wept. We cried because God healed that little boy of autism. Yeah, you know, we're coming into the best of times and the worst of times. There's going to be financial chaos in a lot of lives but it doesn't have to be in your life. And if you're like me, you're turned off 
on all the fundraising techniques that I, that you, you notice we don't do that, but that we see these fundraising techniques that are just based on greed. And that's why I'm so excited because when I first saw this series, the title, Breaking the Power of Covetousness, I thought, oh no, it's just another fundraising thing. But what is covetousness, Rob? Covetousness is wrong desire. You see, uh, many times we want money to hoard it upon ourselves. We want the car, we want the boat, we want the house. Now, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. God wants to bless us. I believe that God is the God of blessing, but I also believe that our prosperity must be pure, or we must have pure motives. We cannot have our big house or our big car being our identity or our idol. What should our identity be? What our, our identity should be that we are sons and daughters of God and that God loves us and, and we are secure in uh, that God uh, knows us, that He loves us, and that we know Him. And what should our purpose be with the, the exchange system called money? in this temporary thing called life. Well, I believe that we are made uh, to be a blessing. We've been created to be a blessing. And if God uh, blesses us, then we should be a blessing. Instead of abusing the finances, instead of wasting the finances. So many times I see people that waste their money. They, they, they waste it on luxury. They waste it on pleasure. They waste it on, on covetousness. Instead of saying, hey, God, what do you want me to do with my finances? How can I be a blessing to the earth? Now, God doesn't have a problem with us uh, uh, having a good life, going on a vacation, uh, even flying uh, maybe first class in an airplane. Uh, Pleasure and luxury will come and go, but in in the end, it's people that count. Now, you are what the Jewish scriptures call a seer, S-E-E-R. What is a seer, and how does it operate within you? Well, uh, Many times, uh, you know, people say, you're a prophet. Well, I am am a seer. I see uh, visions. I see um, symbolic pictures. And then the Lord gives me the interpretation. Uh, My great aunt uh, told me about uh, the ability to be able to see. I believe that everybody can see, that we have spiritual eyes, we have spiritual ears, we have spiritual uh, senses, just as we have physical senses. My great aunt taught me that uh, you can close your eyes and see with the eyes of faith. And I said, well, how does that happen? And she said, it's like almost seeing a TV screen in front of you. The Lord will show you things to come. He will show you things about people. And he will also uh, show you what he desires to bring forth in the earth. Could you do that right now? Could you close your eyes and tell us what God shows you? I can do my best, yeah. Go for it. I see that uh, there is a businessman that's watching. You are in great financial difficulty. You own a a company, a huge company, and you have over 300 employees. And the Lord is showing me that the problem has been that you've had an open door of greed and covetousness and lust. Uh, You are the CEO. You are also a major shareholder in this company. You own the majority of the company. And the Lord is wanting to set you free from greed and covetousness. If you will open your heart and say, Lord, I'm sorry for this. I forsake this sin. I forsake this idol. Uh, The Lord will set you free and you'll begin to see the blessing of God flow in your business. You are a Christian. You are a spirit-filled man of God. You attend church, you are a giver, but there's something in your heart that you've placed before the Lordship of Jesus Christ and Jesus wants to set you free. I also see that there's somebody that has a broken um, um, a vertebrae. You have a cracked vertebrae in your spine. Uh, the Lord is healing that. The Lord right now is fusing your bone together and he's healing that. I also see that there's a person that has a deformed right arm. You're not able to use your right arm. And right now, as you stretch forth your arm, you'll see that your elbow is loosening, your wrist is loosening, and and also your hands are loosening. Matter of fact, you feel like there's a burning sensation in your hand. 
Go ahead and stretch out your hand right now and, and you'll see the miracle power of God. There are many people right now that are watching. You need financial miracles and God will heal you. But you need to repent if you have greed and covetousness in your heart. It is a sin just like any other sin. But if you will confess that and forsake that, you will watch God bring forth miraculous blessing to your life. There's also people that are believing for miracles. If you'll just stretch forth your hands toward the TV, right now I'm going to release the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for those that are believing for miracles. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would invade the rooms where they're watching. Right now, I see somebody getting touched, and you're shaking under the power of God. You're sitting in a lazy boy chair. Uh, you have uh, many illnesses. Matter of fact, you have a whole list of illnesses, and the fire of God is touching you right now. The fire of God is burning out every infirmity, every sickness and disease disease right now. I believe that many are being healed. Receive that healing touch in Jesus' you, name. You know what I believe? I believe that as Rob was sharing, people were being receiving a seer anointing. If, but the very first thing is you have to make sure who your Lord is. And there's no other name given unto men in which we must have our sins atoned for. And that's the name of Jesus. Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and died for your sins, tell him, ask him to live inside of you and be your Lord now.